you know, something I hear a lot of unbelievers say, and this is a criticism I hear a lot of people say, is that God is unfair because he expects us to be perfect. And if we're not perfect, then we'll go to hell. People wonder, why would God make us to be sinners? And knowing that we can't be perfect, why would he send us to hell for not being perfect? And the thing is, this is not why anybody goes to hell. Nobody goes to hell for not being perfect. If we were sent to hell for not being perfect, then everybody would go to hell. We are sent to hell for not accepting Jesus Christ. So to complain about this, about not being able to be perfect, and to be, and complain and say that, that, oh, now we gotta go to hell because we're not perfect, is silly because you're still given a chance. Today, you can accept Jesus Christ. Today, you can repent from your sins and turn to Jesus. So this is what saves you, not your actions. So what we have to understand is no matter how good we might think we are, we are still sinners. You know, if there was a judge that was allowing people to, to um, you know, kill people, or allowing people to steal from other people and just let them go and let them go, would you say he was merciful or would you say that there's something wrong with him? You would say he's not just. God is just. That is his character and he cannot stray away from this. But Romans 6.23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have all earned our wages. Our wages is death. And that doesn't just mean the physical death. It also means spiritual death and eternity in hell. And as we have all earned this, it would be unjust and it would be wrong for God not to pay us this death that we deserve. So as a substitution, as a, as a sacrifice, Jesus has died for us. So you not being perfect won't send you to hell if you choose Jesus. He has already paid the price. So God is not unfair. Even though you can't be perfect, you can be made better because after you accept Jesus, not only will you be given eternal life, you will also be given sanctification, which is the changing of your heart, the changing of your ways, and the renewing of your mind by Christ coming to live in you. And he will make you more like him every day. Still will slip, still will fall, but you can rest assured that you are going to heaven. The Bible tells us that Jesus will not lose one, not one that the Father has given him. The Father first must nudge the heart of an unbeliever and soften it. After this, we will be given the ability to choose Christ. After we choose Christ, there's no going back. Once we're in his hands, then your uh, salvation is secure because you don't have to worry about yourself anymore. You don't have to worry about, oh, I might mess this up. I might mess this up. You don't have to worry about that. Then you're then in the hands of Jesus. When Jesus comes to live in you, he's more powerful than your sins and he will start to overcome them in your life. Romans 5, 8, but God commanded his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So just think about that. Not only is it not unfair, it is, it actually is unfair, but not on our end. It's unfair for him because we were enemies to God. We were enemies to Jesus. And he still did this for us. He still died for us. Think about that. How could we not accept that? How could you know that somebody died for you? And do we ever really think about that? Do we ever really think about someone losing their life, being spit on, and being uh, ridiculed and, and called names and beat up and, and them taking all this for us so that we can live forever instead of going to hell? You know, when we really think about this, we think about how evil it is to reject him or to not even care. That is a pure evil that 
I, I, my, with me with my heart and heart and then my sinful state was um, always rejecting it and not wanting to believe it. But historical evidence shows us that many, many millions of people have died and still to this day are dying because they know it to be true. And it all started out with the eyewitnesses of the resurrected Jesus. Anybody that rises up from the grave, that's my vote. That is somebody that I'm willing to follow. Somebody that has an empty grave. You can follow a dead Buddha. You can follow a dead Muhammad. You can follow a dead Joseph Smith. I'm going to follow the living king that still reigns and is still changing lives and is still working people and still can give people eternal life. But if you choose to go in your own way, if you choose to try to do things in your own goodness, if you believe that your own goodness can get you there, there's a warning in Isaiah 66, 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorrent unto all flesh. Hell is a scary place where a fire is not quenched. It never goes out. Where the worms don't die. Where people are abhorred by seeing each other. By looking at other people down there suffering with them. All because of a simple choice. Of choosing to humble themselves. And to understand that them themselves are not enough. And we need Jesus Christ in our lives. There's nothing unfair about the bargain. There's nothing unfair about Jesus dying for us. If you don't like the fact that you're not perfect, that's fine. Go to somebody who is perfect. And, and once you start to really resist your sin and hate your sin, that's a good thing. But accepting it and thinking that you're just good enough is a mistake that's been made by many and many of people in the past. The Pharisees and scribes were the same way. They knew they weren't perfect. They knew they had greed. They knew they, they had jealousy. But they had this high and mighty stance. And they wanted to go off the Old Testament alone and think that the way that they followed the law was enough. And nobody is. Nobody does enough. Nobody is enough. We need Jesus Christ. Something to think about. Do take good care of yourself.